Okay, so I'm going to use this deck as an example um, uh, for our laying out a stair video. And the first thing you need to do is decide what your rise and run are, your total rise. The one thing you need to keep in uh, mind when you're talking about the rise uh, is, or the total rise, is not the distance from your deck or your porch or landing or whatever to the ground immediate, immediately below it. it that uh, measurement is going to be from here to where the stair is going to land. So somehow you need to uh, you know, get a pole and get a, a, you know, maybe you have a 10 or 12 foot two before you stand up here. And then you have another 10 or 12 foot two before you stand up over here and you're level to that point. See, eight foot five and a half. Now I actually measured it on the side and it's eight foot six to this pad right here. Now the interesting thing is, is that we didn't have this pad poured before we started our stair. Uh, I actually did a combination of where I wanted this to be versus where it measured to be. So uh, one of the tricks there is you, you want to try to see if you can get, let's see, let's turn on our risers for a second. If you can get your risers uh, around seven and a quarter, seven and three eighths, or even seven and a half, you know, this a one by eight will work perfectly here. You know, uh, of course, and we'll go over this a little bit more in a second, but you, you don't want this to be more than seven to three quarters because it would not meet the building code uh, for residential. So you want to try to keep these uh, somewhere around uh, seven and a quarter, you know, seven and three eighths. Now, if you have to make them seven inches, which you can do, if, you're, if the math works out, and we'll go over the math in a minute, um, then you'll have to rip down your one by eights, your risers. And all this is treated lumber that we're talking about. So let's just turn those off for a second. Okay, so let's just use Google's uh, calculator here. So we know we have a rise of eight foot six, and we know that because we've we measured it on at the, the real site, this is a drawing of the real site, but I've actually been there. This is the house I built for myself most recently. And I know that I have eight foot six. Now I had concrete block here, so I was able to measure to a joint line. I could measure to, uh, this shows, at one time I was gonna use poured concrete, and that's why it shows this poured concrete. But I, in fact, I used concrete block to save a little money because the foundation wasn't that tall and it's fine. So I had a line, you know, a level joint line, but you're gonna to need to measure uh, down to your landing, wherever your stair's going to land, wherever you desire it to land, uh, to that point out here, not back here. Cause this, this land, this land, this yard, could actually be just sloping downhill like that, you see? So if you measure from here to here, that's not. So you need to kind of balance this, this. You'll have to go back and forth a little bit. You'll have to say, okay, so I'm, I've come out 130 inches. You know, you'll have to measure out so, because I know I've got 13 treads and my treads are 10 inches. And uh, I'm gonna show you how this, we lay this out in just a second. Um, we're just talking numbers right now. We're talking initial concept the uh, the idea behind the stair, right? And this is why you're planning all of this out. Uh, so we know that, or now we know that I've got eight foot six. Let's go back to the calculator. And we know that 96 plus six is 102, okay? Now, we wanna to try to find, when I first did this, I just guessed, and I said divided by 12. Okay, equals 8.5. So I knew that was wrong. So how do I clear this thing? So let's try 102 divided by 13. Okay, oops. Equals. See, I should have 
equals uh, seven point eight four. Something's wrong with this picture. Okay, that's true. Okay, so I was talking about treads. We'll we will have fourteen risers. Okay, so you always have one more riser than you have tread. Okay, so we want to go 102 divided by 14, and you may have to do this a few times just to get it to get it where you want where you want it. So 7.28 is a good number. That's close. It's really close to seven and um, a quarter. And what it literally turns out to be is closer to five sixteenths. So let's clear this. Let's divide five by 12. Let's see, I'm sorry, 5 divided by 16, yeah, 0 0.31. So in all, in, all, in all practicality, you know, we don't, uh, <laughs> we're not going to use a number on our tape measure that doesn't exist. So we're going to use uh, 7 and 5 sixteenths for our riser, and I believe that's what these are, 7 and a quarter. I ended up actually literally, if you'll watch the video, which is the next lesson, uh, you'll see that I added a sixteenth of an inch to this, and that's how I got from uh, eight foot five. You'll notice that's eight foot five and a half. That's how I got to eight foot six because I have thirteen uh, risers, and and I added that's thirteen sixteenths. So basically, I added almost an inch to my rise, but I didn't have the pad poured down here yet, so I could adjust it. So what I did was. I cut a stringer and I placed it here and we propped it up with a four before laying flat and um, then we poured the pad underneath it so it was kind of a customization of, uh, of for the pad height all that said this is how I would start off from scratch I guess I'll have enough room I'd start myself here I'd come out 10 inches Ten, and I would go down seven. I'm just going to make it a quarter because that's what I've got now. Put you really want to put this in a CAD program or draw it to scale on paper. Okay. So what I did there was I just copied my riser and my tread. I'm just going to select that, and I copied it. Bam, and then brought it down. And I'm going to say times uh, 12 because I've already got one, so I don't need another one. Okay, so that's basically how I would get my shape of my stringer in my drawing. And then what we would do is well, we know our 2 by 12s are 11 and a quarter wide, so we would make them 11.25. And then you would bring this line down here to there. Bring this one down here somewhere and then bring this one back and then you can delete these little extra pieces here, extra lines. So that's the shape of our stringer. And then we would just bring it out into half and that is our that's our stringer. That's our that's our rough initial <laughs> stringer design. Now, what you're going to do is at the top here. Let's go back to here. I'll show you this, and we'll talk about attachment methods in a minute. But let's turn that that riser layer back on. So. You, you can imagine you're going to come up through here and, and add three quarters of an inch thickness of one by eight to each of these, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that makes, as you do that, and this takes a little while to get into your noggin, um, you're adding that to each one, but you didn't, you're not going to add it up here. Now, if we were framing a house, we would be adding it here later as like a trim board, but on a deck, you're not going to add anything here. So what you have to do is you have to take that three quarters off the back, not in the corner. Okay. So what you're going to do is after you, when you're laying out your stringer and you'll see this in the next video, lesson number two, you'll take your pencil 
and scribe your line here and then you'll just cut that part off see All right and then that'll give you nine and a quarter on the top you don't take it off any of the others because you're going to be adding it to them after you get your three stringers installed now the next uh, tip or secret here is that you're also going to be adding an inch if you use five quarter treads there's your treads you're going to be adding two treated deck boards they're five quarter by six to make your tread right now when you do that uh, you're going to have an extra inch of height okay so the way you maintain that seven and a quarter is you will cut an inch off the bottom okay and again you'll see this uh, when you in the video when you see me actually do it in real life so what you're going to do is you're going to mark come up an inch and cut this off pretend like we're cutting it off okay delete that and the reason I've seen some people, and I'm not making fun of them, but I've, I've seen them make the mistake of taking it off here instead of the bottom. You don't want to do that because you want to maintain this height, okay? Because it's the same concept as you're adding all the, tr you're adding all those riser boards to each one. You're also going to add an inch to each of these Okay, inch here, inch here, inch here, inch here. So these are all relative dimensions, right? If you add an inch worth of flooring or steps, you know, treads here, you're also going to be adding it up here. Okay, so that's why you take it off the bottom, not the top. Okay, so if we take that stringer, let's see if I can get a hold of this without adding anything to that group. Now you'll notice if I take this stringer that we just drew up there and we're pretending that we cut it that it will match up perfectly with this one see just like that so now i'm just going to delete that one and uh, we're going to talk about attachment method here for a second let's turn our treads and risers off again these are a simpson angle bracket you can get them at two two and three inches then we've got all kinds of sizes this is the best way to attach your stringers this is not the exact bracket this is just one that i, I drew quickly uh, just to show you but you don't want to try to toenail or screw these um these stringers uh, at an angle or anything like that the, the safest way to do this without splitting these stringers is to use these joist hanger screws and use uh, these angle clips and clip it to the, the deck. That's the strongest way. Um, if you start toenailing at an angle or screwing at an angle, you're gonna, you run the risk of, of splitting this. And I've even tried to come in through the back before and split them uh, that way because what happens is you'll come in next and you'll try to screw your your treads down and then that screw right there will run into that screw coming out of there and it splits so uh, trust me on this one now you will have to have this board here and what we do there is we strap it we take some strap uh, and anchor it to the the, the deck I'm not showing I don't show all the framing on this particular drawing but this piece here can get strapped to the band and then you can make it so that a couple of your screws go into the the deck and a couple go into that and it'll all be good when you're when you're done that's a very strong way to do it so quick inline edit here i noticed when i was editing the video i didn't talk about this and it's one of the most important things uh, to actually talk about and that is the dimension you know from here uh, from your existing deck or the deck that you've just built to your stringer okay 
So you want that finished height to be seven and a quarter or seven and five sixteenths. I think we ended up making this seven and five sixteenths so our risers would work a little better. But let me turn off the uh, treads and risers for a minute. I'll just turn off the treads. But the important thing here is that when you're placing your stringer, you want to measure down from the deck and your seven and a quarter or seven and five sixteenths, whatever your riser height is that you've decided on is from your framing to, to framing, from stringer to framing, okay? So that when you add your tread back on, it is then seven and a quarter from the deck down to your tread, okay? So the code only allows a three-eighths of an inch of variation. Well, I like mine to be perfect, okay? I don't like there to be a difference between this from the deck. I don't like there to be a difference between the riser, the top riser, which is from your new stringer to the top of the deck, and down here, okay? So these are very, this is very important. If the billing inspector comes out and he's measuring this top and bottom riser, that's typically where he will find the variation. You're not going to find the variation in the field, you know, when you're measuring every one of these because you cut them all the same. Where you're going to find the variation is in the top between the deck and where you placed the stringer at eight and a quarter and then you put an inch on top of that to make it seven and a quarter okay so that's just a quick edit because that will be on the exam and uh, it's very important the placement of this stringer is very important okay and that's uh, actually why i use these clips these metal angle clips is because I can make uh, very fine measurements. I can make very fine marks here, get these stringers in perfect uh, location, and then I can use screws uh, that are easier to place, you know, easier to get in the, <clears throat> excuse me, the correct location than trying to toenail these things. And down here, you basically, uh, you, can, you can take some clip angles and, if you've got an existing landing concrete pad down here and clip it, but what we did was we temporarily propped this up and we poured the slab underneath it. And uh, typically when you do that, you don't have to really secure those because you've got your risers and your, uh, your treads uh, securing everything. If you've got any questions, uh, send me an email at Tony at uh, artistsandtony.com. Uh, I don't have the email set up yet for the Artists and School of Construction. That'll be coming soon. You can always send me an uh, email to Tony at artistsandtony.com. We will talk about handrails and things like that in the future. The handrails are, you know, you can, there's a million different ways to do handrails. And uh, I wasn't going to go over that in this section. This, this little class was just talking about the stringers, which seem to give most people get uh, have a, you know that seems to be the problem most people run into after you get to this point the handrail seems to be easy it's just it's just uh, grunt work at that point but to, one clue on the handrail is that to make this uh, step stronger is you would want to have a mid post that comes all the way down to the ground out here and that makes that really strong so well, I hope you've enjoyed this little class. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, make sure you go watch the next video, the lesson number two. It actually shows us, you know, cutting these in, uh, in real life and uh, it shows you this uh, to this point that we, that we get them to uh, on the job. So thanks a lot and uh, thanks for watching this early, <laughs> these early versions of these courses. Um, they'll get better. Hopefully I'll get better at, at teaching them and showing, uh, you know, how to do these things. And of course, uh, teaching is a whole nother skill level than actually uh, doing the work itself. 
and hopefully it'll all get better over time uh, which will make you want to come back for more so thanks a lot guys i appreciate it